God promised Abraham that he would bless him, that his descendants would be as numerous as the stars, and that through Abraham's family, all the families of the world would be blessed. Abraham believed God's promises and trusted his word. Now it was time to find a godly wife for Isaac, and seeking her meant applying the same principles of faith. He called in his most trusted servant, saying, Swear to me that you will find a wife for my son who knows God, not from the women here in Canaan who worship idols, but return to my hometown and find a maiden there. His loyal servant had only one concern. What if there is no woman willing to leave her hometown and travel so far away to this strange land? Abraham confidently recounted the promises that God made to him and responded to his servant. The God of heaven, the one who will fulfill every promise he made, he will send an angel to go with you. The servant was encouraged by his master's words and swore to him that he would do exactly what he asked. The servant took ten of his master's camels and set off on the long journey. When he finally arrived, he stopped at a well just outside the city, and as he waited, he prayed for a sign. O oh Lord God of my master Abraham, please grant me success today and show steadfast love to my master Abraham. I pray that while I am standing here by this spring of water, the maiden who is to be Isaac's wife will not only serve me water at my bidding, but will also offer water to my camels. Before he finished praying, Rebekah approached the well. She was very beautiful. The servant ran to the young lady and asked, Please, may I have a drink of water from your jar? She quickly gave the stranger a drink. I will fetch water for your camels as well, she said kindly. The words struck a chord in the servant's heart. Could it be that this beautiful girl was the one for his master's son, Isaac? The servant studied her while she went about the difficult task of watering ten thirsty camels. He could see she was as kind as she was beautiful. The servant was now confident that Rebecca was the one for Isaac, and he adorned her with jewelry. When Rebecca's brother Laban saw the grand procession of camels near the spring, he ran to greet them. Laban invited the servant to stay in his father's home and to join the family for dinner. As they sat down to eat, the servant interrupted, I cannot eat until I have done everything my master sent me to do. And he began to explain all that had taken place. After listening to the servant's amazing story, they all agreed that it was God who led him to Rebekah. The next morning, the servant said to Rebekah's family, Let me go now and take Rebekah back to my master. But her uncle and mother begged, Please, don't take her now. Let her stay at least ten days. Then we will let her go. But the servant urged them that he must return home right away. The matter was settled when Rebekah agreed to leave. So the family blessed her and sent her away to begin her new life. Rebekah and the servant traveled nearly 500 miles to return to the home of Abraham. As they approached the settlement, Rebekah said to the servant, Who is the man walking in the field toward us? The servant replied, He is my master. She quickly jumped down from the camel and prepared herself as the servant ran ahead to tell Isaac the wonderful news about how God had chosen a special bride for him. Isaac and Rebekah were finally introduced, and it was truly love at first sight. They met and married the very same day and had a long, happy life together. The promise that the whole world would be blessed through this special family would be fulfilled hundreds of years later because out of Isaac and Rebekah's family would come Jesus, the Messiah.